If you want to request docking, then you should be able to push a button for that. Seems pretty routine. If you want to check the selling prices of Paynight, deploy a fighter, or switch back to the mothership, you should be able to push a button for that. But the way menus are organized in Elite Dangerous, you'll have to play UI Hero for something so basic like deploying an SRV. I'm Hal Price for Ghost Trap, and this is how to use an Elgato Stream Deck for making macros and hotkeys. For the simple things like Galaxy Map, System Map, Heat Sinks, and Chaff, I use a hotkey button which can be found in the system drop down menu. Program the hotkey bound for whatever you need, like a cargo hatch, a landing gear, or presto. You got a button that's both easy to use and see. Hell, slap a pretty picture on top and buddy, you're filled with joy. For something a bit more sophisticado, like requesting docking, you'll need a multi-action button from the stream deck menu. We have our resident nerd, Commander Sparticles, here to tell you how. Thanks, Hal, uh, but it's uh, Sparks. Not sparticles. Whatever you say, Jacashawea, lead the way. Okay, making a request docking button is pretty straightforward. Like Hal said, you'll find the multi action button in the Stream Deck menu. Drop it in wherever you like. In this area, you'll need to write out all the actions of going to your left hand panel, tab over to Contacts, scroll over to Request Docking, press it, and then exit the panel. Good lord, that's a lot of menu, or something we use every day. That it is, Hal. Speaking of which, keep in mind that if your left-hand panel was in transactions or contacts prior to pressing the macro, then it won't work. Unfortunately, this can be a reoccurring problem with a lot of macros. Since our Stream Deck button real estate is limited, folders are our friends. For deploying SRVs, I made a neat little folder. In here, I can select which SRV to deploy, plus I have all the functions I'll need while driving around, like cargo scoop, recall ship, enter exit turret, forward reverse, recall to miss ship is an easy hotkey. For the turret, cargo, and reverse drive, I use toggles. While filming externally, I often forget whether I'm in forward or reverse drive, so having a toggle really helps me out. By the way, I, I put a link to all these icons in the description. For actually deploying the SRVs, I have a multi-action button that does the following. Opens the center panel, scrolls down to an SRV, selects one, and deploys it. Again, it's pretty straightforward once you know your menu movements, but testing these buttons is still very important. If one thing is out of order, it just won't work. Spacula, how about something actually fun like the point of fighter or telling it what to shoot? <sighs> it's, it's sparks, Hal. And yes, this is all fun. Though one of the more complicated multi-actions is deploying a fighter. Just like the SRVs, I've made a handy folder for fighters. In here, I can release whichever fighter I want, give it commands like attack or dock, and even switch to the fighter or go back to my ship. It's a great set of hotkeys and one of my favorite folders, but they were also the most frustrating to program and honestly, kind of disappointing to use. Sounds like maybe you don't know what you're doing. Well, the thing is, Hal, there's, there's a lag time between selecting a fighter and selecting a pilot. You see, even just a single frame of lag can cause a macro to fail. You have to build in delays between complicated macros if you want them to work. So in the multi-action list, I've put a small delay action to compensate right here. Personally, I release the fighter first, then I pilot it. So I have another multi-action that allows me to enter the fighter after launch, but you can do it whichever way you want. Then if I need to switch back to the mothership, this is my macro for that. Just be sure to include that small delay for menu lag in each of these macros. Well, that's the frustrating part. What's so disappointing? Was it your pod and skills? What's disappointing about it is that if at any point prior to launching you've accessed the center panel, then everything will be thrown out of order. Also, once you've launched a fighter, entered it, and returned to the mothership, then you'll have to reset the panels to do any of it again. So it's not a very reliable tool, but if you need to quickly launch a fighter, then it is good for at least one cycle. Secretly, I'm hoping some of you have already figured out a better way to do this and we'll share it in the comments because I'd love to have something that's much more standardized or like repeatable. It. This was supposed to be a tutorial, not a cry for help. How? It's Sparks. Sparks what? A conversation? Sure. I hope folks watching will ask Frontier to allow for a plugin or make one themselves instead of relying on half-baked tutorials from you. Well, Hal, making these ourselves is still pretty fun. Tell them about the folders you made for accessing things outside of Elite, like Inara our recorded videos, or even another Stream Deck profile like OBS. Well, to be honest, I thought you'd never ask, SpongeBob. Website hotkeys are our friends. I have the best prices for Paynight 
and low temperature diamonds straight from Minara. Did you forget how to engineer that FSD? Get your answers here. Engineering blueprints and locations straight from Minara. Find that station nearest you, copy it like this, bam, and paste it to your galaxy map, bam, bam, bam. I even have an alt tab do it, get a switch between programs. And since we're in the business of making videos, I have access to all my saved videos and my screenshots using an open button which can be found in the system menu. Now listen here, you'll need to drag and drop the path of the folder to the app file area. Don't try to link it using browse, it just won't work. And check this thing out. You can switch to another Stream Deck profile like your OBS for your streams and go back to the game like nothing ever happened. That's pretty cool, Hal. Also, one more thing about folders. I put my silent running toggle inside a folder so I don't accidentally press it. Also, I made sure the toggle isn't directly behind the folder button. This way, I don't accidentally activate it. In fact, under all of my folders, I made sure that important buttons are not directly underneath so I don't accidentally deploy, attack, or tab out to anything that I don't intend to. And going back to profile switching, what's really cool is I made one for combat mode and analysis don't mode. Don't act so surprised, Spider-Man. If you like that, then let me show you all some buttons that can save you time or even save your life. Yeah, uh, sure, and then also the how- Have you ever been distracted while headed off to some far off system? What in the world? Wait, where in Sam Hell was I going? Well then, let Quick Jump show you the way. It's a multi-action hotkey that combines select next waypoint and jump. But wait, there's more. Find yourself interdicted and need a high wake ASAP? This baby also packs in a boost and full throttle function stat. Right, but what about the analysis mode switch? Wait, do you like getting shot at? Do you love the sound of popping a shield cell? Then use this shield cell multi-action button. It combines a hot shield boost in action with a soothing relief of a heat sink. It's the two in one that's second to none. I'll tell them about the analysis mode switch. Tired of read the point your lippets? I'll tell them about the analysis mode switch. Shoot a ball off with one press of a button. Be sure to add a delay between the devils, and you're back in business. Please, how the analysis mode switch? Well, yep. Well, when you're done having fun in the game and want to nerd it up, then press this here button, and I'll let this other guy tell you about anal yes mode. Analysis mode. Anyway, I made two profiles, one for analysis mode and one for combat mode. All I did was make a copy of this profile and switched out these four buttons for combat mode. Not only does it switch your panel here, it also switches your mode in game. I did the same thing with the FSS button. It activates your FSS in game and it gives you buttons for tuning, zooming, selecting a target. You could do this for all sorts of profile switches like mining or, or I, don't, I don't know, just have fun with it. Also, uh, we didn't cover this in the video, except for the part that we're covering it right now, but there's a player-made plugin for Elite that not only provides pre-made function switches, but also tracks different states of your ship in-game. They are pretty cool and add to the fun of using a stream deck. We hope one day a comprehensive Elite plugin will be made to cover things like Wingman and Navlock, turning on Wing Bacon. Uh, Sparta, I made that. I made a Wing Beacon doohickey, but there's a slight downside. Oh, really, Hal? Well, that's cool. I can't be any worse than the deploy fighters thing I made. Well, it might have the unintended function of also destroying your ship. But other than that, it works like a charm. Yeah, how that's not something that we want to put out there. Well, we hope you found our stream deck buttons useful, like request docking, deploying SRVs, deploying and commanding fighters, mode switches, and tab sites. Maybe gave you some ideas. And if any of you have suggestions, corrections, or have a whist list of functions, please uh, let us know in the comments. We really do read every single one. Thanks for watching. And, and remember, when you find yourself down in your luck, when you want to make an extra book, don't ask how, ask how. Play it, Tom. When you find yourself all down on luck. What's all this? Ask how, ask you a theme song now? And you're searching for an extra book. Go ask This? Oh, uh, this is a very important button. Whatever you do, 
Don't press this button.